It's 105.5 WDHA, Jim Monahan and Joe Ho. We're doing something a little bit different this morning. We're also putting this video live on our Facebook and Instagram channels. And I want to welcome very talented artist Lauren Taylor from Vancouver. Good morning and welcome to the DHA Morning Jolt. Hi, Lauren. Good morning. Thanks for having me, guys. Well, thank you for getting up this early. I know this is a lot earlier than you're probably used to getting up. In quarantine times, yes, certainly. But I'm here. I got my coffee. Good. Show our listeners what's behind you on the couch. This will give oh, you an idea I, how early this is. Yes. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they're not. They're not with us yet. No. They're. they're, they're I'll it's just make. It. We just live in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I do. Or, I do. I don't have my full body, but, you know. Lauren's a mixed media artist who has been licensed by Major League Baseball, the Major League Baseball Players Association, and the National Baseball Hall of Fame. You do really extraordinary work. Tell us about your journey, how you progressed through your art career, Lauren. Oh, goodness. Um, well, I would say 10 years ago, if you told me I was going to be an artist for a living, I would have laughed at you. So I was never really part of the plan to do this. Um, I casually kind of did pencil illustrations in the later part of high school. And, and I originally started, quite honestly, to kind of emote through art. So talk about things, for example, my mental health that I wasn't really sure how to put into words, but I could kind of put into art because it's vulnerable, but not as vulnerable. You could be like, oh, it's just art instead of, you know, being like, no, oh, that's how I feel. And so that's kind of how I got started. And um, Kind of, I'll just give you the cliff notes, but um, I did that for a long time. During the holidays, we do kind of some commission work, um, but pencil drawings are a niche market, and it wasn't anything like I planned on, on actually doing for a living. Um, and then I got hit with a line drive baseball about four years ago, softball, in the face, um, right in the face. And uh, it, was, it was not good. It, it, I mean, it broke, I think, four bones in my head and face, and um, hemorrhaged my retina completely. Both eyes were swollen shut, knocked out cold. Not not great. Um, and I didn't really know much about concussions at that point. But I will tell you that I was kind of like, oh, it's a mindset. I'll be fine. You know, I'm I'm good. I'll just you know, once I can open my eyes, I'm fine. And uh, yeah, and it, it just it changed everything. My ability to um, maintain my mental health and. I was at a desk job and I loved who I worked for, but it was by no means my passion. I was doing kind of human resources. And um, yeah, it, it, I, I couldn't play sports anymore. So instead of going to work and then doing sports after and on weekends, I found that I was no longer knew my identity. I'd always identified as an athlete. So I started moving towards making art for sports and started experimenting with on wood and mixed media and stencils. and. Um, really weird but within like a year uh i put out a piece of james paxton after he pitched a no hitter um in vancouver here he's a local player and he threw a no hitter against the jays in seattle so kind of a big pacific northwest moment um i posted it he saw it and wanted it and left two batting practice passes and that was kind of the start i was like this is pretty fun like what if i could get this to more players and within four months i had left my job and now it's year two of doing this as a career. So, and, well, fast forward a few years, you're now commissioned by Cooperstown itself to do some work. How exciting is that? I still don't really believe it some days that I'm doing this, <laughs> to be honest with you. But um, yeah, it's it's such an honor to you know one be licensed by Major League Baseball, but to also be you know the Hall of Fame is is newer and it's I mean any sports fan. It, would understand it's a pretty pretty big deal for me so I'm, I'm really excited we're talking with lauren taylor this morning here at 105.5 wdha on the morning show we're also on our facebook and instagram pages i do have some samples of lauren's art this is relatively early in your career if i'm not mistaken yep and then this is from a couple of years ago this is one of the first pieces of lauren's art that i purchased and then i don't know if i should show this yet or not mm. Because this is a gift for somebody. Oh, but uh oh, awkward. And if he sees it, but you can see more of the detail coming in. And then this is one of my favorites. That's this is from, uh, yes. from the 2018 uh, season. The detail in the jerseys is just incredible. Thanks. I, on the other hand, really like the Yankee stuff, especially <laughs> the mantle. 
Yeah, I've been doing it with Yankees lately, so you're welcome. How did you come up with that idea of, it, of like art within art, incorporating stuff inside jerseys and batting helmets and things like that, Lauren? Oh, okay. Well, it took a like solid rejection, like a, a big one, to kind of be like, oh, I need to do something different, or maybe what I'm doing is isn't working. And it was actually by Top Baseball Cards. Um, without naming names, I believe the sentence was, "A layman hobbyist could do what you do," Ooh. word for word, and. I was crushed. I mean, absolutely devastated. And I was like, how can I make this different? How can I make it so a layman hobbyist can't do this? And so I started thinking, well, maybe I, I'd actually gone to Seattle with my own camera at this point. I'm like, no, I'm going to take my own photos that I based my art off of. Um, I started paying for like front row seats with my camera because I couldn't get a media pass at this point. I still probably couldn't, but you hear my dog snoring now? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> she was ripping. And uh, yeah, so I was taking photos and I took one of Felix um, at a Mariners game where, you know, he's, he's got kind of the, the fancy haircut and he had the big sunglasses on and it was kind of a lifestyle for him. Like it was from neck up. And I was like, there's a lot of room in those sunglasses. What if I did, instead of the reflection it had, what if I kind of altered that and started putting different things in there? Um, and that's when it kind of started. It was a really freeing moment for me because instead of the, the same critique I'd always get, which is, well, it's based off of photos and it's pretty much different, just a rendition. I was now taking my own photos. This has, had to change once I got licensed for MLB, but that's not part of the story. Um, yeah, and that's kind of, I was like, it's been this chip on my shoulder that I got rejected by all the baseball card companies, especially that one sentence. And it's, I was like, how can I do this differently? And so it started with those sunglasses and then it became um, kind of getting better at putting images and then I wanted to tell a story. So how can I tell a story about this player by just looking at a photo, no words. So then like that Red Sox piece you have, it's the, the last team you know, that had as many wins as they did that year. Um, and it's kind of all the, the different players and, and ticket stubs and things like that. And so as a baseball fan, a casual one, you can look at that and be like, the Red Sox World Series team, cool. But as someone who knows a lot about the history, you can go a little bit deeper. You're like, I understand why those things are in there. So that's kind of been the goal of my art. It's evolved, honestly, out of rejection and, and criticism. And I'm glad I had it at this point um, because it, it did alter my art. May, of course, is Mental Health Month. And you had mentioned dealing with panic and anxiety and that sort of thing. <laughs> How has that shaped your art? Oh, well, I think um, I, I've posted on my social before, kind of my childhood, if you will, was pretty lonely. I mean, when you are, especially 20 years ago, when you're struggling with panic attacks as a young kid and anxiety, and you know, I give my parents a lot of credit that they, they've kind of educated themselves now, but back then there just wasn't information out there. So I was labeled as kind of a weird or troubled kid. Um, so I spent a lot of time alone. It doesn't help. I had a mullet, a very bad mullet. <laughs> and I had a lot of, it was questionable my gender at one age, you know, like I, I had some really hideous hair and sweats and it just wasn't a good look. It was not, I was not the cutest child for a while. <laughs> and so, you know, I was kind of like this outcast in, in a way, like, you know, and I think all of that kind of always feeling a little bit out of the circle and lonely kind of made me learn how to be creative in my loneliness. So, you know, it starts with my dog and I playing in the backyard and I, you know, it starts as like, okay, well, you get creative about your playtime and you're less alone. And, and then it turned into, you know, collecting baseball cards and getting really into that. And I just found that if I was distracting myself with other things, I didn't notice the anxiety or the, the loneliness as much. So it's certainly, I think if I was more popular or didn't have so many struggles with mental health, I wouldn't have spent so much time being creative alone. And if I hadn't done that, I don't think I'd be doing what I'm doing now. So it's actually a blessing now. At the time, I was like, this sucks. Why? Why is this happening? But now I really am grateful for it. It's the road that led me here. So. Well, now you're working with probably the biggest sports players of all time, Michael Jordan. Everyone knows about The Last Dance, the uh, documentary that's out now. Uh, the first of six prints dropped yesterday, and there's only 23 in existence for that print, and I think the next five more. Have you gotten his reaction yet? 
No, it, you know what? And if I get Michael Jordan to comment on it, I'll, that'll be like a new, I'll probably black out. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> there's a few players where recently I've gotten Ken Griffey Jr.'s attention. And that was, I was like, well, I, I had no words. Like, I was just, it was so exciting because he was kind of my idol growing up. So if Jordan, you know, like, casually dropped a comment, it'd, it'd be another blackout moment, I'm sure. Really. How long do those pieces take you? Oh, they take, it depends on the size and the complexity, and most importantly, my ability to execute my idea. So if it goes really well, 12 to 14 hours, I'd say. Maybe, maybe a little less if I, like I said, if I'm just crushing it, it comes out just how I want it, and I don't have to do over or sand out things, and yeah. Bigger piece of I'm sorry, all of the information is on Lauren's website. Uh, Lauren Taylor Illustrations.com. You can check her out on Instagram as well at Lauren Taylor Illustrations. Uh, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on this morning with us here, Lauren, at 105.5 WDHA. Best of luck to you and uh, to the dogs sleeping in the background as well. Thank you, Lauren. Yeah, they said thank you. They did. <laughs>